Hello everybody and welcome to part 3 and the final part of this small segment here of three tutorials for DNS hijacking. Anyway, uh, thus far we have done a lot. We have corrupted DNS settings on a remote device. We have redirected the request to go to us. And I still have the things that running from the previous tutorial. You can see here it's sending responses. And I have set running, but I can't actually see that. Rather, instead, what we can do with set is following. So this is where the passwords will be stored. This is where this is the file which will give you the important information that you need or want to have. <coughs> and also, while testing this, I realized that the commercials actually do work when you access it from a different machine. Anyway, uh, go ahead and type in cd slash var slash www enter slash enter ls and there we go so this is the index html this is the copy of the site and or is it the tmp sorry oh yeah we got a lot of things here anyway this collectively is a copy of the site if i'm not mistaken but it doesn't really matter what we are interested in is this particular file here. So it's harvester and there's a date 2015-3 and there's some marcation in the end, doesn't matter. What we want to do is type in tail space uh, minus sign f space slash actually we don't need a slash because we are in that directory harvester and press enter. This will give us a live feed of whatever is going on so we will notice that we, the moment you see something here, the moment you see that you have gotten the password or stuff of a kind, you can actually kill the DNS service that's running on your computer and allow the client to actually do stuff on their own without, go, without having to go through you at all. You won't, you won't destroy your attack if you, that's what you're wondering. The moment you bring your DNS up, your DNS uh, settings in their router will still be first. So the router checks the first DNS setting, DNS service. If they're not functional, it goes to a fallback. And it will always go in that order. So the moment your server goes down, doesn't matter. It's going to go to the second one. The moment it comes up, all the queries will be redirected back to you. But you're adding an extra security layer to your attack. Anyway, let's go ahead and open up our browser. And in the browser up here, you can type in the URL, which we have used for the purposes of this tutorial. So just type in www.linuxquestions.org, press enter, and it's loading. Uh, it didn't actually load properly here. Let's see what the problem is. Let's reload it. Reload it again. Okay, so let's just try to... Uh, I'm gonna... I've loaded this site. A moment ago and I seem to have messed something up but doesn't matter let me just delete the history and try to do it again one more thing one more very important thing to mention is that uh, once you do these DNS settings on computers stuff of a kind you browsers may have cached files and your attack won't take effect until the person actually resets the browser so if the browser that's if you think oh no this is a huge setback it's not believe me like people people turn their browsers off and on all the time at least once per day you will do this at least once that's the minimum amount of that's the minimum amount always so you don't have to worry about that that much www dot uh, Linux questions dot org press enter let's see what load no, the site seems to be broken up a little bit. Sometimes this happens. Uh, keep in mind that doesn't always work to the best of abilities. It's not always perfect, uh, but the URL is the same. Just check it out. It's http colon slash slash www dot Now this doesn't this doesn't really always happen. Just so you know, uh, these files don't always get messed up like this. But from time to time, it does, and on some sites, it does, and that is the risk that you have to take. Uh, you can check it, verify it, but let's just uh, go ahead and try it on a different machine. Let's see how will it load here. Uh, come on. I am running three virtual machines, so this is putting a huge strain 
on my computer. I pra am practically out of resources. Okay, so for Linux questions, uh, apparently it's broke to an extent, but it still loads the site. If this happens, as it has happened to me, what you can do is redo the process over again. Just the whole the whole thing, just redo it. Uh, delete the delete the files in a slash var. Let me just show you actually what you can do. So all of these files you can actually delete and let the let the delete the files and then repeat the process repeat the cloning process with set with set toolkit. You don't have to repeat anything with a DNS chef, just repeat everything with set toolkit and see if that works out. If that works out, great. And most likely it will. If it doesn't, you're stuck with it. I, I know of no other method that can actually help you out. But as I said, just try reloading just try recopying the site over again and you'll see. A moment ago when I did this, the site has functioned fine, but apparently now uh, the site is not functioning fine. And as I said before, this is simply the risk that you absolutely have to take. I mean, there's no work, there are no workarounds. Uh, the best thing to do is to test it out on your virtual machine, but even if you have tested it out on your virtual machine, things can still go wrong. Keep that in mind. We all, all the pen testers work with that risk and there are no guarantees. In any case, uh, if you have reloaded, if you have repeated the process, which is a very good exercise for you, uh, you can go ahead and type in here your username. So, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test uh, relax. Wait, relax. <laughs> no. Relax, and down here I'm gonna say uh, type in test. Let's go ahead and log in. Okay, obviously we failed to log in, but let's see what our file monitoring has done for us. And you see it actually has recorded both of the logins. You see it says VB login username, it's relax, cookie user I, uh, VBN login password, none the first time around. But the second time around I've typed in relax and I've typed in test. So it does indeed work, but let's, let's, try, let's try fixing it. Let's try... Uh, to make it work the way it was meant to work. So remove the harvester, set toolkit, just do this really fast. Social engineering attacks, website attack vectors, a credential harvester, site cloner, 192.168.1.102, http colon slash slash Linux, uh, Linux questions dot org. Ah, I forgot the www. So www dot Linux questions dot org. And this what I'm doing now is really stupid because I you should always copy paste the domain name just to be certain. But I'm the genius that's gonna go ahead and skip that and probably something is gonna go wrong as part of it. Okay, let's exit this and let's see what we got here. Again, we have a harvester file, so tail dash f harvester. And let's go back to our Windows machine. Let's reload the site and see what happens here. Okay, it has it cached. Let me just uh, let me just go ahead and do this. Delete browsing history. Yes, go ahead and remove the browsing history, the foul browsing history that keeps tailing us wherever we might roam or go. And here, uh, www.linuxquestions.org. Please work. Please. Let's see. Oops. Okay, let's see if I let's see if I can fix this. Okay, uh, let's just open up my I I let's just open up the CMD NS. Wait, before I do that, uh, Kali, I'm gonna open up a real website. 
Okay, I stopped this process a moment ago. Excellent. So, t -t -t -t. as I have paused, I have paused the video to figure this out, and I have seen what the problem is. Actually, <laughs> it's quite stupid. You'll see. So, look. Uh, now the DNS proxy, the DNS proxy has stopped. I'm no longer, I'm no longer faking the DNS requests. Nothing is going on on my end. Sure, the harvester is still monitoring, but nothing is going to visit that website. And this is the real Linux.org, www.linux.org, uh, linuxquestions.org. So this is the real website at the moment. And here's how I know. Do NS lookup, and I'll type in linuxquestions.org. And look at what is happening here. It says name linux.org and address is 75.126.162.205. So this is actually the real website. This is how I am rendering it on this machine. I uh, This is not a fake website or anything like that. At the moment, for some strange reason, this is how the website looks like. Maybe there is a bug or something like that, but this confused me a lot. And I, I could have I could have edited this video and cut it and gotten rid of all of this, but I just figured I wanted to show you. Here's why. Uh, not always when you do something is it your fault because it doesn't work. Perhaps something happens on the other side because our attack does work. It works to the perfection. It works perfectly. It's just that the site is such as it is at the moment. The site has been cloned to the perfection and this is not the cloned website. This is the original website. Anyway, uh, let me just conclude the tutorial here and I encourage you to try this method out. Uh, give it a shot. You can even make a website of your own, which you can test, or something like that. You can even download a website from somewhere and use it within your own LAN environment to do some stuff with it, to create a testing environment for yourself where you can safely test everything. And you will see that sometimes it's going to load properly, sometimes it's going to load improperly. But, but, uh, from time to time, it will actually be the right site and you will think that there's something wrong with it, but no. And you can easily check this out with NSLOOKUP and it will give you the IP address that you have requested and if the IP address is correct uh, of the original website then you know that you are accessing the right site but perhaps there is something wrong with it at that particular moment. Usually, I don't know, it breaks or something like that, but those cases are rare. They don't happen that often, but you should exclude that possibility immediately. You see, I've, I had to cut... I've, cut the recording there and I think I spent an hour looking for the solution trying to figure out what was wrong with it until I fig finally figured out that it's uh, that it's actually the real site anyway try it out try some other methods from the from the set toolkit as well later on we will do some other stuff with exploiting websites and what you can actually do to them uh, there are stuff like SQL injections are very important. You have also Java inject, uh, injections into URLs. So if you modify the URLs, you can actually have JavaScripts run or something of a kind, and you can actually obtain remote control of somebody's browser. There are many things, there are many more things that we shall do, but for the time being, I'm gonna cut this, uh, cut this tutorial here, and I would like to bid you all farewell, wish you a lot of luck, and until next time.